What is going on guys? It's half past eight. Mike, Nigel and myself seem to be the only ones here this morning. I think we're the early birds off the site. But um, yeah, prime time to get the smoker on and to show you what I'm using. The charcoal that I'm using is called Nature of Barbecuing. And this is the stuff I was talking about. It's CO2 neutral made from coconut shells for the benefit of nature. 240 minutes of lasting grilling. Um, so yeah, this is really good stuff. And then for smoky flavor, I've picked up some Jack Daniels um, Whisty Barrel Smoking Chips made from 100% Jack Daniels Age Oaking Barrels. I like my whiskey. We'll see how they go. I've never used these before. And I've got my little charcoal starter. Another thing I'm going to do is wrap the charcoal pan in tin foil just so that cleanup is a little bit easier because I've not got access to taps and things as we were on the allotment plot. Saves on washing up really. I'm going to put some of these wood chip. Oh my word. Mmm. Oh, they smell so good. We're going to put some of the wood chip just into a cup. Maybe a handful. A generous handful. We're just gonna soak, soak them wood chips in some water. How about this for half oh, past eight on a Sunday morning? See, so yeah, I'm gonna let them soak. Um, this is gonna take about 20 minutes to get everything up to temperature. Um, so that should be just fine for them to take in enough water. We do also have a water pan, which we will be putting some water into as well. Can't get over the smell of these. Oh. Smells like 100 year old whiskey. Beautiful. This is the charcoal, almost the entire bag. I've left about a quarter in there just in case I need to add more throughout you know, the smoke. But, um, but yeah, this is called the Minion Method. And basically we, we've lined out all the coals here to make sure that they're all kind of touching. Uh, and then we've left a little bit of an indentation in the center. So once the ones that are on the uh, charcoal starter are burning, you know, orange and a, a gray in color, we just dump them straight into the middle of here. And they should slowly, you know, catch the, the rest of the charcoals that are around. And then they should, you know, catch the, and so on. and and there you go and that should give you a slow burn another way to do it which is called the snake method is where you snake your charcoals around the outside and then before you get to the end you come in and then you go again and depends on how big your your bowl is or your tray is depends on how many times you can go around and then you stack that on the top and up the side making sure that the snake is touching but the snake isn't touching itself if that makes sense and then yeah you're supposed to get a really slow burn i mean i have tried this before i wasn't using the best charcoal it was only cheap and it kept going out but it is something i will try in the future but for now we're going to stick with something that's you know really easy and works really well we got a lot of comments on digging for dinner yesterday and messages as well um people wondering how much it was it looked really expensive etc etc to be honest guys i think i just did it justice by taking a really good picture um it doesn't, apart from this door, it doesn't have any 
There's no um, vents at all, any of the way round. What there is, is just a gap that goes around the edge of the, the charcoal pan. Other than that, as you can see, there is nothing. So I'm really not sure how we're gonna get airflow in this, unless I just have the door open to get it sort of going and then try and find a way of uh, keeping it sort of semi-open. But, but yeah, it was only 40 quid, this smoker. I spent two days looking online um, until, I found, until I found this one. It had really good reviews. But I took a photo of it here and put it on Facebook yesterday and people were just like, wow, isn't she beautiful? Like, she is, but she was cheap. <laughs> That's what we're looking for. I think we'll give that another few minutes and then we'll, we'll dump it into the center. Very hot, very hot already. I'm going to leave the door open for five, ten minutes just to get a bit more airflow through because I am a bit concerned that apart from the gap around the bottom, there's nothing else to get the air in. <laughs> so yeah, we'll give it five minutes just to give it a bit of a, a good, a better burn and then we'll close the door up. We'll let it get up to temperature um, and then we'll come back when it's time to, to put the ribs and the chicken on this thing. So these are the ribs that we've got. We've got pork ribs, just from uh, the local butchers, as you probably saw in the last, last episode. <laughs> and these are just gonna go directly on the top uh, grill. So we did put a honey glaze and a smoky barbecue rub on the top. So we'll see how we go. I can't hang them because I don't have the means of, uh, of hanging anything at the moment. <laughs> I haven't got any hooks, but wow, these look amazing. These look so good. Just do something like that. I know there's a lot of people out there with preferences as to which way up you should do them. And look, guys, you're the professionals, okay? <laughs> I'm the amateur, I just like to eat. <laughs> But yeah, I do know that we're, we're gonna not touch these now for at least two hours. We're gonna pop the lid on. We're gonna, I think we're gonna leave that vent fully open at the top, just so we've got some airflow coming from the bottom, just to keep the, the heat going, just for the first sort of hour. And then I might come and shut it down a little bit, maybe halfway. Uh, not that it's gonna make a huge amount of difference uh, because of the amount of gaps in the door. Hey, we'll have a go, we'll see. Um, the chicken I'm gonna put on the middle rack, but I'm not gonna do that for a few hours yet, simply because I wanna see how well this thing is gonna, is gonna start to cook these ribs. My allotment plot smells amazing. Those wood chips from Jack Daniels are insane. They smell just like aged whiskey. I'm gonna go in with some more now. Um, I was gonna soak them in water, and then I thought, hang on a minute, I've got, got IPAs down here. So, if we, don't know where that went. <laughs> if we soak these wood chips in some beer, that's gonna add to the flavor. And then what I'll do is the remaining beer, I'm gonna tip into the uh, water basket, just for added flavor really. I'm also gonna go with the three, two, one method. So I haven't touched them. It's half past 11 now, should have mentioned that. I haven't touched them in two hours. I've just been admiring the smell, to be honest. So three, two, one. Three hours, untouched, covered, not disturbed. Then 
after the three hours i'll take them out wrap them up in foil and then put them back for two hours and then after those two hours for the final hour i'll uncover everything again and that will be when i start to to baste and things like that i'll let these soak now for 10 15 minutes while i enjoy a nice ipa in the shed I'm not the only one who's on it. Nigel just came over and had a cheeky whiskey. I'd say they're sealed now. What I've learned from online is to touch it. And if the rub still comes off on your fingers, then um, they need a little bit longer. But these look absolutely perfect. Just like what I remember doing years ago on the old smoker, although I never had this kind of setup. This is, this is the best setup I've had. And for 40 quid, or less than 40 quid, why not treat yourself, you know? This is a treat, an absolute treat. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna wrap these in tin foil uh, with a little bit of barbecue sauce, and then we'll put them back on for an additional two hours. Can we put that about there? I think what I'll do also is I'll put some sauce directly underneath it as well. Oh, that smells amazing. Oh, that smells so good. Just put some of that on the, on the bottom. This is where I need a, uh, a paintbrush. <laughs> Never mind, the flavour will get in either way. We just baste this up. I'm gonna be quite generous. Try and get all the meat covered. Then we wanna wrap these up in such a way that we can look at them again if we need to. Make sure it's not too tight. I'm going to double wrap them just to keep in the moisture, really. Because the rib bone can actually pierce the foil, so I've seen online. So just to prevent that, we just double wrap it as well. That'll do quite nice. Straight back on the barbecue. Or smoker. <laughs> I don't think I did this with the other one, but. Um, yeah, shiny side of the foil in, because that will keep um, that keep the heat in. Fun fact: Do you know why you get a shiny side to the foil? It's because they the machinery they use to roll this stuff this thin can't actually make it as thin as this is. So what they do is they roll two sheets together, and that gives you one shiny side and one dull side. So shiny side's always going to reflect more heat but i don't suppose it matters we're just protecting the meat really and um and locking in all of that lovely flavor yeah don't ask me to wrap any christmas presents guys <laughs> there we go and we'll pop that back on there and pop the lid on let's have a look at the chicken i put it on about an hour and a half into cooking the ribs because they were looking fantastic oh wow the smell coming from this is incredible absolutely incredible so it does look like i need to top up inside the water pan but everything's cooking quite nicely let's go in with um some of that beer oh my god the smells on this allotment pot i think i let the pan run a little bit too dry but, uh, but never mind Anyway, let's get some water and we'll top this up.
And uh, of course, we've got half half the beer in there as well. That should be absolutely lovely. I think what I'm going to do is put a little bit of this sauce on the uh, chicken wings as well. I know they're hot and spicy, but the sauce smells absolutely amazing. Oh, I wish I had a brush. Just, just a little, just enough. Try not to waste any. <laughs> oh, <laughs> just a little bit. I'm gonna go and see if I've got a brush. No brush. Um, have to just do it the old-fashioned way. <laughs> It's such an even cook, which is one of the reasons why I preferred smoking to barbecuing when I was looking up smokers, because you can just leave it alone, whereas barbecues you have to constantly watch, watch it in case it sort of starts flaming, whereas this thing, you know, the water pan protects the meat from the actual flame. Oh, they're looking so good. That do. So guys, it's now half past two. This thing has been smelling absolutely delicious. We're gonna have a look at the chicken now um, because that's been in for, well, around four hours. Oh my word. Genuinely, that looks like some of the nicest chicken I've ever cooked. <laughs> wow. It's so even. You know like on a barbecue you tend to get hot spots? Well with the water bath being directly underneath the meat, there's no there's no hot spots. So there's nothing to sort of burn. These look fantastic. Oh my lord. Wow. Mm. They are amazing. Completely cooked, really moist. I think we're gonna leave them on while I prepare the ribs for their final step. And then we'll take these off and we'll eat them. <laughs> oh wow, steam coming off of this. We have had five hours now. absolutely delicious still not as um, flexible as they should be or uh, what I'm looking for should I say um, we want the the sinew to sort of dissolve a bit more for that I think we need a higher temperature so what I might do is swap don't want to lose any of that juice swap the chicken for the ribs put them a little bit lower down and then add just a few more briquettes to charcoal just to give it a little bit more of a, a kick really give it some more heat um, yeah, we'll do that. Mm. Oh my God. Oh, the smoky flavor. Mm. Oh, that is so good. I've got to say, that is incredible. Kelly, that is one of the nicest wings I've ever made. Oh my God. It's got like a crust. Mm. I think they call it bark. Oh mm my God. Mm. Yeah, I could get used to this. <laughs> These ribs have had a total now of six hours and the smoker is still going. I think it's absolutely brilliant. I was worried about airflow and things, but it doesn't seem to be an issue at all. Wow. 
Oh my god, the smell. Oh, that's better. Much better. They got a lot more, a lot more flex now. Let's have a look. Oh yes, that's what we're talking about. Rippable. That is delish. So we're going to finish it up now by putting it directly on top of the grill, uh, and we'll just leave it for about 15 minutes, and then we'll come and turn it, and I'll I'll brush on some more some more sauce. And then all this juice and sauce mixture, we could pop into a pot, pull it on the stove, heat it up until it starts to thicken and then use that as a dip. Oh, this is absolutely lush. This is so good. Wow, yeah, they're falling apart now. Save the juice. Pour that in there. We're gonna give this 15 minutes and then we'll come and we'll turn it. I also put some uh, jacket potatoes in the bottom. Which seem to be done. It's a sliding, sliding down the skewer. Awesome. <laughs> mm. Even just plain, that is nice. Mm. It's been 15 minutes since you last saw me, and uh, as you can see, these are getting a nice. Um, a nice crust, a nice bark on them now. And they just look delicious. We're not gonna waste what came off of them. I'd love to, to jar it up and take it home, but I haven't got anything with me, so we're just gonna pour it, pour it over the ribs. And the chicken, why not? them up a little bit. I've been washing my hands in between takes for anyone wondering, no, oh, he was eating chicken with dirty hands. It's just the charcoal, that's all it was. <laughs> but yeah, I'd say another half an hour and then what's left can come off. Me and Kelly have both been, um, have both been eating along the way. <laughs> a little bit eager, I think, but yeah, as smokers go, I think this is absolutely brilliant. I can't wait. I can't wait to set it all up again <laughs> with more meat. <laughs> there we have it guys. I was gonna do an end video of me cutting them up, but as you can see, they're just absolutely flaking apart. Delicious. Mm. I know if you prepare a meal yourself, you shouldn't sort of big it up. That is the nicest rib I've ever had. Not even ever cooked, I've ever had. That is delicious. This has been the best investment of 39.99 I've made this year. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna tuck in now. Kelly's here. We're gonna eat the rib, the chicken, and the potatoes just at the table. And, um, and yeah, that's the end of the video, guys. <laughs> I can't wait to eat. Thank you very much for watching. If you're not subscribed, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>